Well, the Boilermakers of Purdue last year was a repeat. Back-to-back -back Big Ten championships. Question this year, rebuild or reload? More like reload. 10-2 leading the conference going into the night. And the matchup with Penn State as we rewind for the last time the two teams met. And the Lions got the victory at State College by 10. Great outside shooting, good inside punch. All Penn State in the victory. That sets up tonight the rematch at Mackey Arena. the biggest game in the country tonight. Number nine, Penn State, and number 11, Purdue, for the lead in the Big Ten Conference. Another sellout crowd to watch number one and number two in the Big Ten go at each other. This game so significant because Penn State trails the Boilermakers by just one game with six games to go. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Barber along with Bob Ford. What an atmosphere tonight. In fact, Bob, they've been lining up since 6 o'clock to get here. And that's the reason why Purdue has come on the floor. Well, there's nothing like having the sixth man ready to go. And this crowd of 14,123 is going to be ready to go. Probably the toughest ticket in the country tonight. Uh, speaking of the sixth man, Todd Foster, what great numbers he has had of late. He's been shooting the eyes out. He's really been doing a great job. Had four in a row against Ohio State that really lit it up for the Boilermakers and kept them in contention. All right, let's talk about the important factor tonight, the Coquelin fueling factors, what does Purdue have to do to win? Well, Penn State is a great outside shooter and three-point shooting team, maybe the best in the country. They've got to get out and play great de perimeter defense, stop the three-point shot, then get to the inside and rebound. They did a good job against Ohio State. It was a big part of that ball game, and it will be big tonight. Coquelin's quality pills have additives to prevent fuel line freeze-ups to make your car start quickly. Coquelin, over 57 years of family pride, makes a difference. For the Penn State point of view, let's go to Bill Zimfer and Bruce Parco. Welcome, guys. Thank you very much, Jim. And Bruce, the last time these two teams met, Penn State shot very well, over 56%, especially effective from outside the three-point arc. But what had been a strength earlier in the season has faltered a little bit. Well, it has. Uh, in their last outing against Indiana, Bill, Penn State struggled from the floor. But in a previous meeting between Penn State and Purdue, Penn State's perimeter players shot a combined 19 for 33, over 50% where Purdue's perimeter players shot a combined 14 for 42, only 33%, and that was the difference in the game. And in Penn State's most recent game against Indiana, they shot only 29% overall from the floor. Big matchup tonight. We'll be back with a starting lineup from Mackey Arena after this. Could it happen again? A national championship for the Wildcats. Some think Kerry Kittles will lead this year's team to the promised land. And Sports Channel brings you all the action with a season of exciting regional matchups. The Wildcats have great perimeter shooting, a tough inside game, and five starters returning to the lineup. It's a combination that's sure to give them a great shot at a title. So follow the action this season on Sports Channel, the basketball home of the Wildcats. Tired of the same old TV? Switch to Sports Channel. It's packed with action and sports of all kinds. Brought to you from around the region and the globe. All day, every day. Sports Channel has your hometown teams. Plus sports you want to see. 24 hours a day. It's all the teams. All the time. Always on Sports Channel. <laughs> Get ready to see Philly fly. Check out the local boys in great Atlantic 10 action on Sports Channel. Check out Temple, LaSalle, St. Joe's, and the rest of the Atlantic 10 as they battle their way to the NCAA tournament. It's all the slams, jams, and frenzy of college hoops right here on Sports Channel, your home for college basketball. They can be explosive or heartwarming. They can be seductive or downright silly. They can be frightening or grippingly dramatic. They can enrich our lives or simply entertain. There's nothing like a movie. And the best place to watch a movie is on Prism. Every month, Prism brings you a fantastic lineup of uncut, unedited, and commercial-free movies. Experience the joy of movies. Call your cable company and order Prism. 
the channel that lets movies be movies. Each day, thousands of kids head to the police athletic league centers because at PAL... It's all about kids. They come for the games, and they come because at PAL... It's all about kids. They come for the positive peer groups because at PAL... It's all about kids. They come to work with dozens of dedicated police officers who know that... It's all about kids. They come to learn at Safe Havens because at PAL... It's all about kids. For more information about joining the police athletic league, call 215-291-9000. They can be explosive or heartwarming. They can be seductive or downright silly. They can be frightening or grippingly dramatic. They can enrich our lives or simply entertain. There's nothing like a movie. And the best place to watch a movie is on Prism. Every month, Prism brings you a fantastic lineup of uncut, unedited, and commercial-free movies. Experience the joy of movies. Call your cable company and order Prism, the channel that lets movies be movies game down in the 60s if possible the Lions come in again just a game back at Purdue needing a victory to even things up tonight at what would be 10 and 3 for the Boilermakers Chad Austin has really picked his numbers up in the conference shooting at least 10 percent better from the floor and almost 20 percent better from the arc in fact he's one of the best three-point shooters not only in the conference but also in the country Purdue's starting lineup the same as it has been throughout the entire season minus the very first game in which the Boilermakers lost to Memphis. One lineup change, and after that, Gene has stayed the same. Come on back with us. We got a big one tonight. Penn State and Purdue from Mackey. We are starting the Jimmy V Foundation for Cancer Research. We need your help. It may not save my life. It may save my children's life. It may save someone you love. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. To help keep Jimmy V's dream alive, please call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. They can be explosive or heartwarming. They can be seductive or downright silly. They can be frightening or grippingly dramatic. They can enrich our lives or simply entertain. There's nothing like a movie. And the best place to watch a movie is on Prism. Every month, Prism brings you a fantastic lineup of uncut, unedited, and commercial-free movies. Experience the joy of movies. Call your cable company and order Prism, the channel that lets movies be movies. Jim Barber and Bob Ford. Bob, you played before a lot of loud crowds here at Mackey. This has got to be one tonight because they have been in a festive atmosphere early this evening. Well, it really makes a difference, I think, to the players when they come in. The crowd is electrified before the game even starts. Uh, the band gets them started here tonight, did a nice job. The, the crowd gets into it, and you're ready to play. If you can come out and get a great start, Penn State had a tough time against Indiana. Prove to them early that this is not going to be a nice place to play tonight. You've got a real chance to do something special, and I know that's what the coaching staff for the Boilermakers would like to see happen tonight. Penn State hasn't played much in Mackey Arena, but just the same, the Lions haven't won here, and last year got blasted by 20. All right, here we go for the opening tip, and it is a very veteran crew tonight of Hightower, Valentine, and Jansen, the director of officials, Rich Falk, here as well. Remember that game at Penn State? Their crowd, much like this crowd at Mackey tonight, was red hot from the time they walked in the building, and I thought that really made a big difference in the ballgame for Penn State. Harrison trying to get the crowd going. I'll tell you what, Bob, it won't take much tonight. Harrison, one of the leading, well, he is the leading steal maker in the conference, gets another one early in this ballgame. Averaging just under two steals a game. Doug draws Secunda. And he sneaks inside for the short jumper, missed it. Chad Austin very active with the rebound. Secunda shot very well from the arc against Indiana, Bob, but very poorly in two-point shots. We're in a tough part of the season where having veterans on your club really makes a difference, and having gone through it before, like Purdue has the last couple of years, knowing what it takes to get the big ball game, Penn State's just learning that, both from the coaching perspective as well as, as players, because they're all brand new. Brandon Bradley had just four points the other night, but gets his first basket quickly into this one, and Purdue off to a good start.
Penn State needs to get a good offensive series here, Jim. They don't want to get too far down too early. They've had a couple of good looks, but Booth missed that one, and back comes Purdue to Roberts. Six nothing Boilermakers. Good fast break action by Purdue getting down the floor, and already Penn State looks like they're a little bit winded. A lot of people thought Penn State looked tired against Indiana. That's a long season in the Big Ten without question. Not the start that Jerry Dunn and the Lions wanted. I don't know if there was a whistle or not. Play stopped. Earl looked over at Paul Jansen and said, wait a minute, I thought I heard a whistle. Now Ed Hightower will try to straighten it out. There may have been a, an intermittent whistle here. I thought I heard one, Jim. I yes, thought I, I did, too. I thought I heard it, too. And it looked like, um, I think out front, Earl took the shot. It looked like he got hit. I thought I heard a whistle. Uh, and we're going to find out here in a second. I think that's the proper call. Penn State should have the ball. Yeah, I think Coach it Katie is agreeing. One of the officials, it came somewhere in the stands. It could have been a scream as much as a, as a whistle because there, there was a lot of screaming prior to the ball game. And... Uh, they all, they all seem to be pretty happy about it. While Penn State trails 6-0 in this game, the Lions have not lost in Saturday games. In fact, they've been perfect so far. Jerry Dunn gets the official explanation from Ed Hightower. The clock says eight seconds, and I think that's what we'll go with in terms of a possession here. That's really a good job to get that straightened out because something obviously bothered the players. I mean, you just don't turn around and lay the ball out of bounds like they did with, without something going on outside. So this was a good job by the officiating crew. Penn State has only eight seconds to work with. Earl slices down the lane and laid it in. Boy, they cleared a path for him there. Good job by Earl to find that little opening. Purdue did not react at all. None of the big men came over to help. So Penn State with its first points of the game. Lions will show a variety of defenses right now, man to man. And on the blocks, Roy Hairston. Might have had that one altered by Calvin Booth. Booth hit the ball. I, I thought it hit the backboard before he hit it, but the official standing right on the, the place said he got it on the way up. Secunda with a shot fake inside the booth and traveling on Penn State. Calvin Booth, who had such a terrific beginning in both Big Ten and non-conference play has, has had some problems lately, and frankly, maybe his wiry frame is starting to wear down a little bit. Well, there's a look at that. That ball hit the backboard before Booth hit it. Penn State might have gotten a break on that one. I think you're right. Uh, Booth is he's not very muscular yet. He's going to have to get a little bit bigger. One of the things Clark Kellogg of ESPN talked about in the Thursday night game against Ohio State is how strong Purdue is. You know, you can whack them, you can bump them, but they can still go up for a shot. And Austin, I think, is testament to that. Ball loose on the boards, and Calvin Booth fires too strong, and there's Dario. It will not count traveling on Penn State. Good rebounding effort there by Penn State. They had great inside position. Gaudio had a good look at it, and if he would have taken it right up, would have had a bucket. He anticipated somebody coming from one side or the other after him. He moved a bit and got the turnover. Very strong beginning for the Boilermakers, who can take a two-game lead in the conference with a victory this evening. And the foul on Secunda outside. Secunda not quite as quick as Dove, and... Herb got a step on him, and all Glenn could do was reach out and grab him. Roberts nearly open. Austin got bumped. Missed the shot and taken down by Secunda. And back comes Penn State. Little hesitation on the shot. The first one was open. Pete Lasicki with a bomb for the outside. He got hot against Purdue, and the rest was history the last two times, or the last time these guys met. Three bodies on Brantley, and the ball down to Penn State. That's one you have to dunk. You absolutely will have to dunk that one because Penn State will collapse to the inside. Did a nice job with it. On the blocks, Gaudio stripped away by Roy Hairston. Another steal by Roy Hairston. 
You remember in the last matchup, Lasicki was really in a drought, came into the Purdue game, and really got it started, and it kind of lit him up for a while. And Lasicki, the other night, couldn't throw it in Lake Monroe. 0 for 8 from the arc, and overall shooting just 2 of 12. A good job by Dub to use his quickness getting to the baseline. Secunda tried to get the body on him and hoped it wouldn't be called, but he bumped him a little too hard. Brad Miller in for Brandon Bratley. Miller with some very strong games against Michigan and against Ohio State really lit a fuse under the team against the Buckeyes. And the big difference in his play has been the fact that he's willing to catch the ball, turn around, and pop the shot very quickly without much thought. So he's now reacting to game situations rather than thinking about it, something that the coaching staff had been working with him. It may be that Miller is done with the sophomore blues, as Bruce Weber calls it. Duff splits the free throws. We have a timeout. 15.36 left in the first half. This is for first place in the conference. Purdue in the early league. Get set to hit the hardwood as the Big Ten Network brings you college hoops excitement all season long. Don't miss all the fast-breaking end-to-end action when the Big Ten takes on all comers and conference matchups are in your face as the run for the league championship heats up. Join us for all the full-court intensity when college basketball's best take it to the hoop on the Big Ten Network. When you only do sports, you have to do it right. Sports Channel brings you sports the way they're meant to be seen. Everything from your hometown team to great games from across the globe. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's all sports, all the time. And if it's sports, it must be Sports Channel. Could it happen again? A national championship for the Wildcats. Some think Kerry Kittles will lead this year's team to the promised land. And Sports Channel brings you all the action with a season of exciting regional matchups. The Wildcats have great perimeter shooting, a tough inside game, and five starters returning to the lineup. It's a combination that's sure to give them a great shot at a title. So follow the action this season on Sports Channel, the basketball home of the Wildcats. Moments ago, Penn State's Dan Earl makes things happen from the guy who can make things go. That's Pete Lasicki, who had 10 consecutive points back in January against Purdue, Bob. Boy, did he get a great look at the basket. Wasn't a gold shirt anywhere in the picture. And if uh, Lasicki can get it going, well, that would be a big, big plus for Penn State. Headline in the local paper today said, Boilermakers ready to pound Penn State and some of the Penn State players took exception to that. We'll see if that is a rallying cry for them tonight. Now that's unfortunate too because the, that did not come from a Boilermaker player. That came from a sports writer and these kind of things can really turn into a negative aspect for Purdue. Claudio blocked by Hairston and fouled by Hairston. By the way, Roy already has his uh, quota two steals in this game playing good tough defense on the inside too it, earlier as you said he was able to pick one out of there this time he gets the big hand up but he gets all ball but when you bring that bring that arm down that hard 90 percent of the time you're going to pull your body in and make body contact and that's where the foul gets called big 10 player of the week Matt Gaudio kind of an old-fashioned way of shooting free throws He's got it out over his right shoulder. The, that's the old-fashioned way that they, they taught to shoot it. As you come up, your thumb is supposed to go right past your nose. And if it does, most of the time the ball goes in. For Gaudio, it worked once out of two. Nine to six Boilermakers with five minutes, almost five minutes gone in the first half. Purdue had a pretty fair start against Penn State when they played him the first time, and then the Nittany Lions kind of got it together, and by halftime, they were in pretty good control of the ball game. In that game, Penn State outshot Purdue and out-rebounded Purdue. The only plus for the Boilermakers was the play of the bench. Hairston airballed it up and back to Penn State. Purdue has lost a bit of its momentum from the start. Lasicki, tough shot, got it! Lasicki, his second three of the game, and we're tied at nine. That was a tough shot. It really was a difficult shot. He had a defender right in his face. But great shooters don't mind that. 
Wanamakers have hit just one of their last five. And now they've turned it over. So after the very strong start, Purdue starting to make some mistakes, and Earl tries to split them. Penn State zone giving Purdue a little bit of trouble. <laughs> no foul call. Ted Valentine said Dog was cleanly blocked. And back comes Lasicki. And we got a violation. Traveling call on Calvin Booth and Penn State. The last time we did a telecast between these two teams, we had a ton of traveling call in the first half. Really did. It was a it was a game where people were really moving their feet. Here is a look a moment ago. There's the uh, play on the inside, and the judgment was that there was more ball than anything else. Of course, the uh, partisan crowd here of Boilermaker faithful didn't think that was the case. Well, the other thing is Valentine was in great position to make that call. He was right there. Or in that case, a no call. Token pressure by the Lions is Todd Foster now on the line of the guard along with Porter Roberts. Purdue jumped out to a 6 0 lead. We're tied at nine. And a whistle and a violation on Purdue as the Boilermakers turn it over. Offensive foul coming up on Brad Miller. Check that, Brandon Brentley. Jeremy Metzger, big number four now in the game for the Nittany Lions. Along with Damian McKnight, number 14. Metzger is a load. Well, he and Phil Williams both really gave Purdue a lot of trouble in the last ball game. Secunda slicing and a foul call. And that will be an offensive foul on Glenn or no. Let's see. Offensive foul, Glenn Secunda. So we go back the other way. And for Secunda, that's number two. Good job here by Brantley. Look at him come from the weak side. Establishes his position well before Secunda gets there. And he draws that foul, and that's big trouble for Penn State. They need to have Glenn in the ballgame. And he has to play on right now. They couldn't get a substitute in place for him. Quick enough. Foster catches a skip and works against Lasicki. Wallermakers have gone cold, and with seven minutes gone, we're stuck on 9-9. Nine -nine. Very tentative with their inside play. Gaudio with a shot fake and a pass and a foul. Matt Gaudio very good at the shot fakes. Does a nice job. He's one of those big guys. It looks like when he, he makes that fake, his entire body's coming apart. So it's very hard not to take the fake. It looks like he's going, and it's a great thing that he has. He's not tremendously quick, but he's got a nice first step, and with that great ball fake, he really gets the job done. Secunda averaging 15 points a game, but he has to leave early. When he was in there moments ago, they would have had a front line of 240, 225, and 250. That's not bad. Paul Jansen spots a foul outside. They're calling this one very close tonight, and with good reason. It's for the Big Ten lead. And Donovan Williams got caught on the block. A look at Jerry Dunn moments ago, who closed his practice earlier today, and I asked Bill Zimfer and Bruce Parkfield, the Penn State announcers, is that unusual? And they said yes. In fact, as of late, he's gotten a bit testy with the press. Obviously, this team starting to feel the pressure of hanging around in first and second plus in the conference. Which isn't necessarily a bad sign, it's just something they're not used to. Foul coming up on Penn State, Jeremy Metzger. Metzger had five fouls in 10 minutes the other night against Indiana, so he is no stranger to foul problems. Going to get caught down here on a baseline using that bulk that he has, using his belly right here. Hands are okay. But you see, he just keeps moving forward, putting more body on Miller until he finally forces him off balance, and he's that's the a, foul. He's got a big belly. I bet you it's a lot more solid than it looks. Justin Jennings hangs in the air after the Boilermakers had missed six in a row. Purdue back on the board. Much more aggressive offensive move that time by Jennings than what we've seen the last couple of times down. The 11 to 9 Boilermakers. Penn State not really moving in their offense. They're not getting the picks that they normally get. They're not quite as sharp. 
Metzger's not the guy you want handling the ball, I think. Shot clock down to five. McKnight forces. And out of bounds to Purdue. Look as if Porter almost got his hands on it last, and then Gaudio touched it in an effort to save it. Two-point game. Boilermakers leading. We'll be back. Yeah, life's competitive, all right. Win or lose, doesn't matter. It's how you look at the finish line. Get there first. There's a lot of shoes in this wall. Better let me help you. After all, I'm always going to be waiting on you at the finish line. Get there first. 1995 marks the 100th season of Big Ten Conference football action. Celebrate the centennial anniversary of the Big Ten by ordering this commemorative home video chronicling 100 years of football and men's basketball. For just $19.99, you can relive the rich tradition and proud legacy of gridiron legends from Grange to Griffin and basketball greats such as Lucas, Magic, and the Fab Five. To order, call 1-800-BIG-10-4 or send $19.99 plus $5 shipping and handling to the address shown. Each day, thousands of kids head to the police athletic league centers because at PAL... It's all about kids. They come for the games, and they come because at PAL... It's all about kids. They come for the positive peer groups because at PAL... It's all about kids. They come to work with dozens of dedicated police officers who know that... It's all about kids. They come to learn at safe havens because at PAL... It's all about kids. For more information about joining the police athletic league, call 215-291-9000. Tonight's Big Ten game, a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of any or all of this game without the express written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. And we'd like to say hello to all our viewers who are watching us on Direct TV tonight. It's a packed and very lively house. Obviously, a lot at stake. Well, if you thought they had a big lineup in there a minute ago. They've got Metzger and Phil Williams, 250 and 265 along the back line. Joe Paterno would like that outfit. Penn State in their zone. You saw the turnover graphic moments ago. Purdue plus three and a half turnovers per game in the conference. And protecting the ball, they're the best in the league. As I say it, look what happens. But Penn State turns it back over. Jennings with the good knockaway. Purdue has not taken many outside shots tonight. They've gone to the inside, mostly to the backboard with their big guys. You get the impression both teams are a little uptight. Boy, great shot by Miller. He took a big bump from Metzger and still is able to stay on balance and get it in the basket. And Miller, by his own admission, wants to get even stronger in the offseason. Dan Earl buries a three. He had a tough night against Indiana the other evening. Then he comes out and drains that one. Jennings is in trouble. And the rebound taken down by Donovan Williams. Penn State does an outstanding job of boxing out on their defensive board. There wasn't a gold shirt to the inside. And they're doing the same thing on the offensive end. Purdue 13, Penn State 12. Boilermakers with a quick turnaround after beating Ohio State and Columbus Thursday night while Penn State flew back from Bloomington to State College Wednesday and then came back to the Hoosier State yesterday. Ah! That one hit the rim. So depending on who knocked it out of bounds, the ball actually hit the rim before the shot clock expired. It was purely by accident, though. So if it's Penn State ball, that should be a reset. If it's Purdue ball, well, that goes without explanation. I know the fans are going, but I thought the ball hit the rim before the clock expired. It, it was hard to tell because Jennings was up there, and Jennings got his hand caught against the rim in the net. And uh, that happened so fast, I'm not sure the ball got there if it was Jennings' hand that hit it. Off the inbounds pass, Lasicki handles for Penn State and now gives it to the quarterback. Alan Eldridge will check him. 
Awful lot of dribbling by Penn State. They need to move that defense by passing the ball around the perimeter like their offense is set up to. Here's the big house, Bill Williams. A little high low to Earl, and cutting is Williams. No. Oh, look at the battle on the boards. And James takes it down for the Bonamakers. Hairston on the baseline. Nice reversal by Roy Hairston. Coming up on one side, reversing back to the right with a strong right hand. And that woke up this crowd. This is a terrific atmosphere tonight. You can tell that first place in the conference is very much on the line. Penn State trying to keep this game at a slower pace. They want a half-court game. Earl found a seam on the left side of the wing and hit his second jumper. Make that his third field goal. He has scored seven. Half of Penn State's points. Brad Miller cleans up his own miss. That's a tough place to hit the court like Earl did when there's no whistle. You got a whole bunch of big guys jumping up and down in there trying to get the ball. How about this number? Seven Boilermakers have already scored in this game. Wasicki misses and the rebound to Hairston. Maybe Pete's cooled off a bit. Penn State now three of six from the arc. Miller underneath. I would say the sophomore blues are gone. Miller really having to fight with Metzger, who outweighs him by about 25 or 30 pounds. Look at this battle. Ball goes deep. Miller just keeps it alive and comes with I don't know how he shot that when he had his legs crossed under him and was able to get up and still get that ball into the bucket. This is just a great athletic effort by Miller. Miller already with six points on the game. Lasicki will get a blow. Back on January 24th, he had respectable numbers against the Lions. And he completes the three-point play, and now Purdue is up to a six-point lead. And now Brad gets a well-deserved rest. The luxury of having Brad Miller come off the bench is a lot of times he matches up against another team's second team center. That's exactly right. That's a good point. Big matchup to watch right now is going to be Williams and Roy Hairston. Williams doing a nice job on the offensive backboard. Hairston's going to have to stay after him to keep second opportunities down. There's an example of too much dribbling. They have lost 25 seconds off the clock and now have little time to work with on this possession. Penn State is out of sync, and Purdue wants to take advantage. Eldridge all by himself in the corner. We have a whistle on a foul coming up against Penn State on Phil Williams. Really easy to see what the Boilermaker coaching staff has worked on in practice. They want the ball inside. They want to go against the big people from Penn State and try to get them into foul trouble. This ball came in the, from the outside from Eldridge, who had a wide open 15 footer, but he wanted to go after Hairston to the inside, who drew the foul. The other night, Roy Hairston had a gorgeous wraparound pass against Ohio State that led to a two on one layup. Porter Roberts back in for the freshman, Alan Eldridge. Eldridge has already shown a lot of promise with his team. You made a good point a moment ago about the dribbling of Penn State, and, and the reason that's happening is that they're not getting good crisp angles on their screens, and the Boilermaker defenders are able to go over the top of the screen or slide behind it, and that is creating a lot of dribbling activity out front. It just kills the offense. Like the old adage, if looks could kill, Jerry Dunn has been seething about his team. Meanwhile, Gene Kitty likes what he sees. The Flyers say hello. Bonjour. Guten Tag. Hola. Ciao. Yo. The Philadelphia Flyers making visitors feel welcome with greetings of goodwill and friendship. Oh, 
crushes the Oiler player, Marshman. He got it back. In home games, you can only see on prison. Tired of the same old TV? Switch to Sports Channel. It's packed with action and sports of all kinds. Brought to you from around the region and the globe. All day, every day. Sports Channel has your hometown teams. Plus sports you want to see 24 hours a day. It's all the teams. All the time. Always on Sports Channel. Movies, sports, music, an entertainment combination you can only find on Prism. It's terrific movies like The Last Seduction, Murder in the First, Blown Away, and Interview with the Vampire. It's exclusive home team sports, featuring the most flyers and Sixers games on TV. It's four great music shows, a different show every week with the best sounds from around the region and the world. Movies, sports, music, every month, exclusively on Prism. Point lead for Purdue and mission game that we talked about, Bruce. Bill, Purdue lives off their defense. And once they get that ball, they want to get it down and convert before the other team can set their defense up. They use their athleticism very well in that regard. Roy Hairston converting there. And the seven-point lead for Purdue, the biggest of the game. Now, Purdue, big game tonight because they're going for their third straight Big Ten title, and that has not been done in a long, long time. They've had a great run. This is really a critical stage, I think, for Penn State. They got down a little bit earlier in the half, then they came back. Now they have to have composure, get their offense going a little bit, get a good look, and get back in it again. Same lineup that was on the floor before the timeout. Matt Gaudio cross court to Phil Williams. Nice position inside for the big house, and he lays it in. Good patience, good look. Brandon Brantley draws Phil Williams way out top. Now Herb Dove will operate. Bounce pass inside. Hairston on Booth. Decides to get it back out. Underneath the bucket, Brantley. He was too far under there, but Purdue ends up with it again. Calvin Booth has been a factor in both those shots, even though he didn't block the shot. Porter Roberts, too much glass, and Penn State comes back with a chance to narrow it to three. Earl puts it right in there. Penn State's not going to go away, Bill. Nine points for Danny Earl, and it is a three-point game again with under six minutes left in the first half. 21-18 for Lee. Gets it down to Hairston. Spin move. And this time he got it over Calvin Booth. That was a terrific move. Nice spin move to the baseline. Calvin's got to cut off the baseline. He can't give up the baseline. He can play behind, but he can't give penetration on the baseline. He can get help if he drives, if he forces a guy into the middle. That Gaudio pops open. Herb Dove went for the steal and missed it, leaving Gaudio by himself. That cost him. Herb wanted to go down there and flush one. And he can do it. <laughs> he was a high school high jump camp at his high school. I think 6'11". Tremendous athlete. He's not a serious great hop. Not a great shooter, though. No. Now, if you're Penn State, that's what you like to see. Make Purdue back it out to set up and run the set offense. That's right. They're doing a real good job defensively. Gaudio got a piece of that one, and here he goes on the break. Fouled as he went into the basket. Penn State did a great job that possession, guarding the perimeter, made Purdue move the ball around. Calvin did a nice job identifying here. Calvin gets a turnover, identifies Matt, throws it ahead, and Matt does a good job of just taking it to contact. Well, Matt Gaudio will go to the line now and can draw the Nittany Lions to within a point. Porter Roberts will go over to the bench, and Alan Eldridge will come in. Roberts is heading into the locker room. Well, I'll tell you, if he's hurt, that really, really hurts Purdue. He 
He's our quarterback. He's our veteran leader. Gaudio misses a foul shot. Roberts on that foul of Gaudio ended up right in into the cameraman on the side of the court there. Didn't look like he was injured at all, but he went right into the locker room in the tunnel, and now one of the trainers is following him in. That's a tough loss for the Boilermakers. Matt Gaudio hits. He's two out of four from the foul line now. And it's a two-point lead for the Boilermakers, 23 to 21. inside the three line. Well, a couple of minutes ago, I said he was not a great shooter, but he flushed that one. Yeah, you're right. That's icing on the cake for Purdue. They're not going to live on that. And that, that was proven the second half up in State College. They just could not hit shots like that. Austin from three, Foster from three, yeah, they can hit those. But mid-range jumpers by some of those other guys are an adventure. Alvin moves his way outside. Brad Miller letting him go out there. to Damian McKnight. Back outside the booth again. Four seconds on the shot clock. McKnight goes to the rack, and it's rejected by Miller. We are seeing some great defensive play. Yeah. Ball almost taken away by Gaudio as Dove took it. Good help defense that time. Six seconds on the shot clock. Miller takes it. That one was tipped by Booth as he got a piece of that on the rejection. Purdue moved the ball well. They had pretty good player movement, but they did not attack the defense. They just moved the ball around the outside, as opposed to Indiana Wednesday night, taking it, moving it, and then taking it right at the basket. Bill Williams handling out top, gets it to Damian McKnight. Booth coming out top. Lob inside, no one home. And here comes Chad Austin. here and some impressive defense by both of these teams. Hairston goes to work on Gaudio. That ball was returned to him by Calvin Booth. But here's Miller. Nine points for Miller in the game. And a that's timeout called by Penn State. That's a good timeout. Secunda on the Penn State sideline. Penn Two State fouls. got back in it, Bill, and, and they had some momentum, and then they're starting to lose it. That's a real good timeout by Jerry Dunn. Try to get his guys focused a little bit. Secunda on the bench with two fouls. He had to score a point in this game. And he came into this game averaging almost 15 points per game. It's 27-21. Penn State is down by six. 2.18 remaining in the first half. Here at Mackey Arena, there is the Boilermaker huddle. Now Penn State challenging for a Big Ten title this year. And Bruce, you have been through every stage of this. Yeah. I tell you, you know, it's, it's a great league, and it's a real challenge to try to move up the ladder in this league because everybody just reloads every year. So I'm really proud of what's happened with our program, and I'm really proud of the job Jerry and Eddie and Frank and Money and, and the players are doing. They're not going to go away. They've got a lot of senior leadership and a lot of character. And Purdue's going to win this game. They're going to have to take it away from Penn State, I think. These, Penn State won't be intimidated in here. Penn State is out rebounding Purdue, but Purdue getting more points in the paint. Danny Earl inside to Phil Williams off the glass and no rim. Brandon Brantley over to Justin Jennings. Again, Calvin Booth redirected it, but getting for the offensive putback. It is now an eight-point lead. 
Well, they could have got Brad Miller for a foul on that rebound. Lasicki will not go. Purdue coming up. They've got a three on two. Justin Jennings spins. That's a terrific individual move by Justin Jennings. He's a great athlete. Six points for Jennings, and the lead is now 10 with a minute left in the half. Penn State's got to get a good look here, Bill. If they're going to try to go into Calvin Booth. He's got to convert this. The block, and it will be Penn State ball. Yeah. Still a good look. And Penn State trails by 10. We'll be back. History teaches primordial perspiration shouldn't mess with one's style. Consider this powerful discovery. Bright guard, pure power, clear gel. An astoundingly clear gel. Thus, it goes on clear without any flaky white stuff protecting one powerfully. For when it comes to protection, one shouldn't mess around. Bright guard, clear gel. Anything less would be uncivilized. Do you believe in movies? Prism does, and that's why you can count on Prism to bring you great movies like Blown Away, Exit to Eden, The Last Seduction, Murder in the First, Richie Rich, Disclosure, Mrs. Parker and the Vicious Circle, The Professional, Just Cause, Boys on the Side, Outbreak, and Little Women. Uncut, unedited, commercial-free movies. If you believe movies, call your cable company and order Prism, because no one believes in movies like Prism. Weekends were made for sports. And New Sport, your source for sports news and information, covers all the weekend action with so many games. Who has the time to catch them all? Now you do with Scoreboard Central. Your weekend spot on the dial for all the scores, highlights, and more. Scoreboard Central. No more waiting. Get what you want when you want it. Informative and timely. Scoreboard Central. for a Bruce Park Hill back at Mackey Arena. Penn State down by 10 to the Boilermakers of Purdue. And when these two teams met back at the Bryce Jordan Center in January, Penn State made a tremendous run at the end of the first half. You can see it there. Yeah. We almost have the opposite going on right here. That's right, Bill. If, if I remember Pete Lasicki nailed a couple of shots down the stretch and really kind of got it going again after his injury, his foot injury. So, uh, as we said earlier, I think Danny and Pete have got to get involved here tonight more so than they have the last several games to help Penn State offensively. A lot of pressure being put on Earl and Lasicki. Eldridge is on Earl now. Donovan Williams bounce pass inside goes out of bounds. That time they were running the same play that they ran for Calvin Booth which was open but it wasn't open that time. Earl comes down with some full court pressure. And these are amazing statistics. Over the past four years, with a lead at halftime, Purdue is just about unbeatable. Yeah. In fact, I think they're 16 0 this year for yeah. their lead at half, Bill. So Penn State will go into halftime trailing and will have a big mountain to climb in half number two. Todd Foster to Miller. Anything. Five seconds remain, and we've got a whistle. That's uh, a bad foul. Totally unnecessary foul. 3.8 seconds remain. Penn State would have had to get off a, a desperation shot probably before the end of the half, and there is a foul. I'll tell you what, they're not in the bonus. That wasn't a bad foul. Yeah. I take that back. That was a good foul because they might have had a transition opportunity that time. Donovan Williams. 3.8 seconds remain, and Earl's going to have to fire it up. Metzger, though. Oh, oh great block. Justin Jennings oh. erased the layup by Jeremy Metzger. Boy, that looks like a layup for sure. What a <laughs> terrific block. Wow. Let's check out that before we go to the half here. A 10-point lead at half. Here it is. The great pass. Looks like Jeremy has a wide-open layup. Justin Jennings comes out of nowhere, and there's another guy with some serious hops. 37 wow. vertical, 37-inch vertical jump. Here at halftime, 31-21. Purdue with the lead on the Nittany line.
Could it happen again? A national championship for the Wildcats. Some think Kerry Kittles will lead this year's team to the promised land. And Sports Channel brings you all the action with a season of exciting regional matchups. The Wildcats have great perimeter shooting, a tough inside game, and five starters returning to the lineup. It's a combination that's sure to give them a great shot at a title. So follow the action this season on Sports Channel, the basketball home of the Wildcats. Tired of the same old TV? Switch to Sports Channel. It's packed with action and sports of all kinds. Brought to you from around the region and the globe. All day, every day. Sports Channel has your hometown teams. Plus sports you want to see 24 hours a day. It's all the teams, all the time, always on Sports Channel. Get ready to see Philly fly. Check out the local boys in great Atlantic 10 action on Sports Channel. Check out Temple, LaSalle, St. Joe's, and the rest of the Atlantic 10 as they battle their way to the NCAA tournament. It's all the slams, jams, and frenzy of college hoops right here on Sports Channel, your home for college basketball. They can be explosive or heartwarming. They can be seductive or downright silly. They can be frightening or grippingly dramatic. They can enrich our lives or simply entertain. There's nothing like a movie. And the best place to watch a movie is on Prism. Every month, Prism brings you a fantastic lineup of uncut, unedited, and commercial-free movies. Experience the joy of movies. Call your cable company and order Prism, the channel that lets movies be movies. Each day, thousands of kids head to the police athletic league centers because at PAL, it's all about kids. They come for the games, and they come because at PAL, it's all about kids. They come for the positive peer groups because at PAL, it's all about kids. They come to work with dozens of dedicated police officers who know that it's all about kids. They come to learn at safe havens because at PAL, it's all about kids. For more information about joining the police athletic league, call 215-291-9000. Arena and Penn State trails Purdue by 10, 31 21. That's 21 points. The lowest halftime point total for Penn State this year. Let's check out some other halftime scores brought to you by Harness Herbicide. The herbicide that's as dependable as you are. Illinois with a win over Ohio State today. Minnesota just got by Wisconsin by 4, 70 to 66. And Michigan State, Northwestern, that game underway. A couple of other finals. Virginia Tech losing to University of the Mass Massachusetts, 74 58. And Villanova just getting by Pitt 67 to 64 Eastern Michigan ran by Ball State and there you see UConn handled Notre Dame by 20 85 65 earlier today number six Cincinnati no problem with DePaul 27 point win and North Carolina over Virginia 71 to 66 number 13 Arizona victory over USC and number two Kentucky just steamrolled Tennessee how about Georgetown getting by Memphis by 21, 81 to 60, Kansas and Ohio State. That'll be a pretty good game as well. But here it's a 10-point lead for Purdue in a big game in the Big Ten. We'll be back right after this. Okay, new rules. Individuals are no longer more important than the team. You want a piece of that championship? Put it in here. Nobody can do it alone, but together we can do it. Sports magazines include more team photos. More game balls go to linemen. We all play more as a team. We pat someone on the butt when they fail and celebrate like madmen when they succeed. Starter, it's about team. Get ready to see Philly fly. Check out the local boys in great Atlantic 10 action on Sports Channel. Check out Temple, LaSalle, St. Joe's, and the rest of the Atlantic 10 as they battle their way to the NCAA tournament. It's all the slams, jams, and frenzy of college hoops right here on Sports Channel, your home for college basketball. Fruits and vegetables. You know, you ought to eat more of them. 
Yeah, eating five servings a day is a great way to stay healthy. <laughs> you'll feel better and you'll have energy, too. Yeah, that's what the people from the National Cancer Institute say. After all, you are what you eat. <laughs> I believe a little determination can go a long way. Somebody once said, if you lose sight of your goals, your obstacles will get in your way. And the way I see it, why let anything get in your way? When a student chooses to live in any of our 13 interest houses here at University Park, not only will they have the opportunity to live with students who have similar interests, but I think they will find that there is a much greater sense of community and belonging. I moved in here and it was like finding a family in a house in the middle of 40,000 people in this huge university that I finally found a place I could call home that every time I walked in, you know, I said hi to somebody I knew that I could stop and have a conversation with everybody. Um, wherever I walked in the building, I knew who they were. Living in an interest house, I found things that I like and found things that I don't like about my major, about other majors, and also has helped me grow. I think any college, when it comes to issues like retention, recruitment, uh, level of standards, the kinds of standards they can expect of the students, benefits by building a community. It's my responsibility to at least weekly meet with the students generally in the interest house, usually over lunch, and to bring in faculty guests at those lunches where, again, they're interacting in such a way that they're meeting faculty who will be influences on them. In the arts, it's important to know about all of the world around you, including the architecture and the theater and the music. Uh, our programming is um, primarily in primarily involves students going to each other's performances or showcases of their artwork or their design projects um, so that there is this, this wonderful sense of support and interdisciplinary education that occurs throughout the year. In our interest house we have an art studio. It's the only one on campus and it's there for all of the majors to be able to use. The architects use it for design projects. The art students go in there. It's a place where they can paint and not be disturbed. It's just a really great atmosphere. If you look at the international languages house and their focus, they're really, their focus is primarily on, on the language and learning to speak that effectively so that they can be understood and to practice it. For people who are not sure maybe what's going to be my major, what's going to be, you know, am I, am I going to minor in French, am I going to minor in, in Spanish, I don't know. Living here definitely might give them the opportunity to make a decision. I think when you have an institution as large as ours and a residence hall population as large as ours, that creating smaller communities around particular themes is a way to help people feel at home here. Conference, celebrating 100 years of athletic and academic excellence. Do you believe in movies? Prism does, and that's why you can count on Prism to bring you great movies like Blown Away, Exit to Eden, The Last Seduction, 
Murder in the First, Richie Rich, Disclosure, Mrs. Parker and the Viz Circle, The Professional, Just Cause, Boys on the Side, Outbreak, and Little Women. Uncut, unedited, commercial-free movies. If you believe in movies, call your cable company and order Prism, because no one believes in movies like Prism. The flyers say hello. Bonjour. Guten Tag. Hola. Ciao. Yo. The Philadelphia Flyers, making visitors feel welcome with greetings of goodwill and friendship. Oh, he crushes the Oiler player, Marshman. He got it back. In home games, you can only see on prison. Tired of the same old TV? Switch to Sports Channel. It's packed with action and sports of all kinds. Brought to you from around the region and the globe. All day, every day. Sports Channel has your hometown teams. Plus sports you want to see 24 hours a day. It's all the teams. All the time. Always on Sports Channel. Movies, sports, music, an entertainment combination you can only find on Prism. It's terrific movies like The Last Seduction, Murder in the First, Blown Away, and Interview with the Vampire. It's exclusive home team sports featuring the most flyers and fixers games on TV. It's four great music shows, a different show every week with the best sounds from around the region and the world. Movies, sports, music, every month, exclusively on Prism. Bills in for Bruce Hump Park Hill back in Mackey Arena. Penn State will have to climb back into this one. And here are some stats from the first half. That first number there, Bruce, 52%, 36% tells you a lot. Yeah, it sure does, Bill. And the other thing is turnovers. On the, uh, Penn State and Purdue's assist turnover ratio are almost reversed. And unfortunately for Penn State, uh, they have way too many turnovers and not enough assists. All right. Uh, let's look at some more of those numbers. You talked about the turnovers only reversed there only three turnovers for Purdue 11 should be for Penn State and the points off the turnovers uh, 10 points for Purdue let's take a look at some of the action of the first half a lot of action inside for Purdue Bruce and that's exactly where they have to go Bill and that's a great individual move by Harrison that time when they got the ball down in the paint also, we also have some great defense in the first half. Here's Calvin Booth doing one of those. Well, Calvin looks a little more frisky tonight than he did out at Indiana. I think he's playing with a little bit more intensity and enthusiasm, and as a result, he's a factor in this game. He already has four blocks in the game over his season average, and Danny Earl, nine points in the first half. Well, here's, a, here's one of the guys that, that we really think has to get off tonight, and Danny can take control. All right, Danny Earl. Nine points in the first half, and Penn State will have to come back in the second half. We'll be back after this. We are starting the Jimmy V Foundation for Cancer Research. We need your help. It may not save my life. It may save my children's life. It may save someone you love. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. To help keep Jimmy V's dream alive, please call 1 800 4 Jimmy V. Tired of the same old TV? Switch to Sports Channel. It's packed with action and sports of all kinds. Brought to you from around the region and the globe. All day, every day. Sports Channel has your hometown teams. Plus, sports you want to see 24 hours a day. It's all the teams, all the time, always on Sports Channel. The sports world is talking on New Sport Talk. Compelling, conversational, controversial. I think the great issue that's going to be developed here is that this, this icon is facing a death penalty. Discussing the latest and hottest topics in sports. If you didn't enjoy those games, you're never going to enjoy soccer. What'll they say tonight? Find out on New Sport Talk. 
Sports Weekends were made for sports. And New Sport, your source for sports news and information, covers all the weekend action with so many games. Who has the time to catch them all? Now you do with Scoreboard Central, your weekend spot on the dial for all the scores, highlights, and more. Scoreboard Central, no more waiting. Get what you want when you want it. Informative and timely. Scoreboard Central. Second half about to get underway, and Penn State trying to climb back in. Let's check the leading scores and the numbers there. Dan Earl, we talked about his nine. Pete Lasicki had a couple of three-pointers. Gaudio and Williams. But you know what, Bruce? Those are the only four players that have scored. Yeah, Billy, one thing that jumps out at me uh, from the first half statistically is that Purdue's bench was seven for ten. Penn State's bench, two for eight. You see Brad Miller, he came off the bench and scored nine points. Justin Jennings with six, also off the bench. Right. And there's Roy Hairston. Well, you take a look at these, what they call the shot chart, Bruce, where they tell you where the buckets were made and where they were taken from, and all you see for Purdue is a ton under the basket. They're going right where they have to go. They're not a good shooting team, and they're going right to the basket. Second half, just underway. Glenn Secunda only played seven minutes in the first half, Bill. Let's see if he can get off here in the second half and give Penn State a lift offensively. Picked up two fouls and does not have a point. Secunda is in there now, guarding Dove. Hairston open, side of the key. Brantley with the offensive board, though, and a block by Calvin Booth, his fifth of the game. Now well, I think Penn State will give them that shot any time. Absolutely. Calvin held his ground, used good timing. Booth Whoa, the big fellas wheeling and dealing. An offensive foul on. <laughs> a little behind the back action. Let's watch that again. I think Calvin Booth has a chance to be an NBA forward someday. And he showed his skills that time. Facing the basket. Wheeling it in a little bit. Just took it a little too far. So each team fails in their first offensive possession here. Still 10-point lead. 31-21. Purdue leading. Penn State almost had a turnover there on the switch out. Danny couldn't quite get a hold of it. Herb Dove. Chad Austin will drive in. There's Hairston going. Ball tipped out of there. Finally controlled by Lasicki, but taken away by Dove. Chad Austin got it out of his hands, and he'll take the long shot. That's really a tough break for Penn State. They had possession of the ball, then they give up a three-point on the turnover. That one tipped, but goes right back to Danny Earl. Inside the Gaudio, threw the foul as he put it up, and Brandon Bradley is going to be called with a foul as he ends up on the floor. The entry pass, the key here. It's a good duck in by Matt, and he takes a strong to contact. Nice pass by Danny Earl. See, Porter Roberts is back in the game. Evidently, he wasn't hurt too bad. That's good. Gaudio, two out of four from the line so far in the game. He hits this five points for Matt Gaudio, the senior. The pride, there he is, the pride of Follinsby, West Virginia. I'll tell you one thing about that guy, nothing's going to face him. He's going to be battling to the bitter end. One thing that's surprising me a little bit is they're not bringing Calvin Booth outside more often like that. Travel called underneath on Hairston. Only the fourth turnover of the game, though, for Purdue, and Penn State takes over. I think if Brantley comes outside and sets screens for their perimeter players more, Calvin's got to make a decision whether to come out and play him or stay in and protect the basket. Not, obviously, posting up Calvin Booth hasn't been to Purdue's advantage. Glenn Secunda handles the ball. He is so far scoreless in the game. Pete Lasicki with Chad Austin on him. They'll back it out. Danny Earl will reset. 
at the offense. Five seconds on the play clock, though, on the shot clock, and the pass inside is taken away by Hairston. Austin on the run. That was terrific help defense and terrific conversion to the offensive end by Purdue. Right back, Lasicki lobs in for Calvin Booth, and he lays it in. Right back at you. First point to the game for big Calvin Booth. And Penn State trying to stay in this game. Great Four help runners. by Dan Hero. Offensive foul. No bucket. Porter Roberts called with the offensive foul. Got a good baseline drive. Daniel rotates over, establishes his position, takes a charge. That's a great job. Brad Miller, who had nine points in the first half of the game, checks in now for the Boilermakers. There's Danny Earl, who just absorbed a blow on that offensive foul. And he brings it up. Looking for uh, Danny Earl on the fade move, and they couldn't get it to him. Audio off the glass. We've got a foul, and it's going to go against Penn State. Gaudio will be called with a foul. That was an interesting call. It was, yeah. made, it was made by the official way out here. See if we can he see had what a better angle. Yeah. Not a bad call. Nice yeah. having that replay, isn't it? <laughs> Brad Miller, easy bucket. And at that time, Calvin Booth was out guarding Brantley in no man's land, and he wasn't able to help out on the inside move. It is a 13-point lead for Purdue, 38 to 25. Chad Austin going to be called with a foul there. That was still very good defense by Chad Austin. He stayed on his feet took away Pete Lasicki's jump shot. Well, Purdue has expanded on their halftime lead. They're now up by 13. Tired of the same old TV? Switch to Sports Channel. It's packed with action and sports of all kinds. Brought to you from around the region and the globe. All day, every day. Sports Channel has your hometown teams. Plus sports you want to see 24 hours a day. It's all the teams, all the time, always on Sports Channel. The sports world is talking on New Sport Talk. Compelling, conversational, controversial. I think the great issue that's going to be developed here is that this, this icon is facing a death penalty. Discussing the latest and hottest topics in sports. If you didn't enjoy those games, you're never going to enjoy soccer. What'll they say tonight? Find out on New Sport Talk. Weekends were made for sports. And New Sport, your source for sports news and information, covers all the weekend action with so many games. Who has the time to catch them all? Now you do with Scoreboard Central. Your weekend spot on the dial for all the scores, highlights, and more. Scoreboard Central. No more waiting. Get what you want when you want it. Informative and timely. Scoreboard Central. taking some punishment, Bruce? Yes, it does, Bill. Both teams really play very solid defense. That's why both teams are having great years. And they're both willing to, both teams have guys that are willing to give up their bodies, as you can see by both those replays. Penn State with the ball. 15 minutes and 40 seconds left in the game. And you can see Penn State with just one field goal attempt in the half. And in the last eight minutes or so, stretching back to the first half, Purdue has gone on a 15 to 4 run. That was another terrific defensive possession for Purdue. Penn State was trying to isolate Matt Gaudio down low. They couldn't get him the ball. Len Secunda will throw it in. By Danny Earl and 
Porter Roberts out there now. They have been battling all evening long. Pete Lasicki. That'll help. Little pistol guy went off the dribble that time. That was a great shot. will try to light it up. Calvin Booth with a strong rebound. Long pass down, taken away by Hairston. Tried to get it to Secunda. It's a real heads-up play by Hairston. Let's see if Purdue now. They had a mismatch there and didn't exploit it. Brad Miller on the follow. 13 points for Miller now. Calvin Booth on the baseline jumper won't go. Contact underneath, and Matt Gaudio is going to be called for clearing out. Now well, there's other Big Ten action at the half. Michigan State with just a four-point lead on Northwestern. Todd Foster getting ready to come into the game. For the Boilermakers, Jeremy Metzger trots on for the Nittany Lions. And Calvin Booth over to the sideline. Calvin Booth goes to the bench with five blocks. Justin Jim also into the game now for Purdue. Over to Foster. You gotta watch Foster. He'll light it up from three if he gets a look. Metzger with a rebound after he jarred Hairston on the way in. Earl bounce pass to Gaudio down low. Metzger coming down the lane. A travel. Gene Cady says that's the way I saw it too. Well, that time Jeremy had a lot of move and not enough dribble. I should have pulled up and taken a little baby jump shot. And Glenn Secunda still without a point in this game. A 50% three-point shooter coming into this one, averaging about 15 points per game and scoreless so far. Todd Foster has yet to attempt a three-point shot. Miller will take the turnaround jumper. That was a tough shot. Secunda with a board. Real good player movement. Nice court vision. Eleven points. More possessions like that, though. Double digits for Earl now, and a ten-point lead for Purdue, 40 to 30. Lob inside to Hairston. Foster with a bad miss from way out, but an offensive board by Jennings. Purdue's took it, taken a couple of bad shots the last few possessions, and that's helped Penn State. Brad Miller almost had it stripped away. Porter Roberts. Miller was over the top. But Glenn Secunda, he'll be called with a foul. And that's his third. Let's watch the action inside here. Play good defense, you have to finish your defense by getting into somebody and getting the ball. That time, Penn State does a good job of checking out and coming up with it. Brandon Brantley checks back into the game. There's Matt Gaudio on the bench. And Brad Miller now with three personal fouls, but he will stay on the floor. Alan Eldridge also checks into the game. There's Danny Earl on the bench, and Damian McKnight takes his place, and he's bringing it up against Eldridge. Bill Williams. For Penn State, Lasicki for the three. Got a good look. Ball tipped around, and here come the Boilermakers. Justin Jennings looking for.
for a guard, and he gets it to Eldridge finally. Todd Foster trying to find his three-point shot. Miller turn around inside. Uh, Miller got real deep position that time. Penn State can't allow guys to get that deep on the block. That was almost a layup. Secunda will take the three. But Phil Williams with the offensive board. And Secunda into the lane. Passes back, but nobody was there. Trying to get it to Phil Williams. Now we've got a timeout on the floor, and Purdue now with a 12-point lead. Nineteen ninety five marks the one hundredth season of Big Ten conference football action. Celebrate the centennial anniversary of the Big Ten by ordering this commemorative home video chronicling one hundred years of football and men's basketball. For just nineteen ninety nine, you can relive the rich tradition and proud legacy of gridiron legends from Grange to Griffin and basketball greats such as Lucas, Magic, and the Fab Five. To order, call one eight hundred Big Ten four or send nineteen ninety nine plus five dollars shipping and handling to the address shown. The sports world is talking on New Sport Talk. Compelling, conversational, controversial. I think the great issue that's going to be developed here is that this, this icon is facing a death penalty. Discussing the latest and hottest topics in sports. If you didn't enjoy those games, you're never going to enjoy soccer. What will they say tonight? Find out on New Sport Talk. So you think you can hit a jumper in traffic, bury a three, or make a slam dunk with authority? Well, even if you can't, watch the guys who can right here on Sports Channel. This season, Sports Channel's lineup includes the best regional action from the Atlantic 10, the Big East, and the Big 10. So don't worry about hitting the open J. Hit your remote. Watch Sports Channel. And let someone else hit the shot. Well, a dozen point lead now for the Purdue Boilermakers. And there is Pete Lasicki coming off the sideline. He has nine points on the night tonight. And you see that when he goes to double figures, Penn State undefeated on the season. He has nine now, just a point away from that. But Nittany Lions have a ways to go, Bruce, to get back into this game. Well, they do, but they're still in the hunt, Phil. They're, they're okay. They just need to have the kind of patience they had a couple of possessions ago and get good looks and make stops at the defensive end, which they're certainly capable of doing. Eleven times Purdue self-destructs with their lack of shooting ability. Talk about Pete Masicki. He's got good genes. His two older brothers played college sports. His two younger sisters and younger brothers also uh, are very athletic. Brad Miller took the jumper from about the foul line, and Penn State would like to see him take that from there. Damian McKnight runs it up for the Nittany Lions. Take it away, Eldridge. Uncontested layup. Eighteen points off of turnovers now for Purdue. Pete Lasicki with Todd Foster pounding him. He took it away. To Justin Jennings, ran. A 16 point lead. And Penn State is going to call a timeout. Jerry Dunn wants to stop this while he can. Wow. Consecutive steals. One by Eldridge, one by Foster. Let's take a look at the latest one. Todd Foster just took it away from Pete Masicki. Here it is. A terrific individual effort here by Foster. And then another great job to convert down at the other end to get the ball away. He said to Justin Jennings, he's going to make sure of it. And the one before that, Alan Eldridge, a freshman, took it away. Purdue is very active on the ball. That time Eldridge traced the ball, came up with the deflection, and then finished it himself. 46 to 30 now. And 
you can see there, nine steal for Purdue. And that's Purdue's game. They're, Purdue's defenses, their concepts are a little bit different than Penn State's. They want to use their athleticism to get out and create turnovers, where Penn State's defense is more of a support defense because they're not quite as athletic as Purdue. The Boilermakers have hit just one three-point shot this entire game. But they are really playing some tough defense and run on the floor. Look at Alan Eldridge. He is all over Danny Earl. Gaudio across to Calvin Booth. He drives in. Miller, though, got a piece of the ball and took it away. Well, you can't get much better look than that. Pete Lasicki whistled for the foul. Let's watch a matchup of the two big men. Here Calvin takes it strong. Miller just snuck in from behind. That was a terrific play. Brad Miller to the bench now with his 15 points and three rebounds and a couple of blocks added on to that. Alan Eldridge almost had it tipped away and yes, Calvin Booth controls, but there is Justin Jennings and they'll call a travel on him. Well, Dan Earl uh, was yeah. uh, trading the favor and applying a little ball pressure himself that time. Penn State's had a couple of situations where Stolen. they never come up with it. Danny That's Earl on the steal. Play by Danny. Danny Earl with 13 points now. Earl again trying to get it away from Eldridge. Purdue suffers when Porter Roberts isn't in the ball game at the point, Bill. Yep. Coming down to 10 seconds on the shot clock. Justin Jennings bounce pass inside for Brantley. Back to Jennings, and there was Danny Earl to try to strip it away again. Three seconds on the shot clock. Boy, did Calvin Booth alter that shot. Yes, he did. Jennings tossed it way up in the air. That one is batted right back at Secunda, and it goes out of bounds. Still Penn State ball. We have seen more balls deflected put on them. Well, that's really a credit to Purdue. They're really playing with a lot of energy, and that's all that is, is, is taking the energy and making the effort to try to deflect the pass when you're uh, when you're guarding somebody with the basketball, and and uh, we call it tracing the ball, trying to get a piece of the ball as, as the offensive player is trying to pass it. There, there is another deuce. Good ball game. And a little bit of help, though. Penn State's still in the hunt. Down by 12, coming down on eight minutes remaining in this one. And this is where sometimes Purdue has hurt themselves with their lack of shooting ability. And they, they move the ball, and they move the ball, but they really don't attack the defense. And as a result, they have a turnover, or sometimes they end up with a mid-range jump shot. Herb Dove just had it bounce off the foot, so Penn State gets the ball back, but they trail by 12. The Flyers say hello. Bonjour. Guten Tag. Hola. Ciao. Yo. The Philadelphia Flyers, making visitors feel welcome with greetings of goodwill and friendship. Oh, he crushes the Oiler player, Marshman. He got him back. In home games, you can only see on free. Tired of the same old TV? Switch to Sports Channel. It's packed with action and sports of all kinds. Brought to you from around the region and the globe. All day, every day. Sports Channel has your hometown teams. Plus sports you want to see 24 hours a day. It's all the teams. All the time. Always on Sports Channel. Movies, sports, music. An entertainment combination you can only find on Prism. It's terrific movies like The Last Seduction, Murder in the First, Blown Away, and Interview with the Vampire. It's exclusive home team sports featuring the most Flyers and Sixers games on TV. It's four great music shows, a different show every week with the best sounds from around the region and the world. Movies, sports, music, every month, exclusively on Prism. There you can 
see the remaining schedule for the Boilermakers in the Big Ten. They've got tough road games coming up at Illinois and at Indiana. And then against Minnesota Northwestern and Penn State. Their road games remaining at Minnesota and at Wisconsin. So the easier schedule probably for Penn State down the stretch. But this nonetheless a, a critical game of the Big Ten. There's Glenn Secunda still does not have a point in the game. This, this is a critical game, but it's not a do-or-die game, Bill, because Penn State does have an easier schedule, and Purdue has a couple of uh, games that could certainly be losses down the stretch, and Penn State conceivably could run it, could run the schedule. Pete Lasicki lost the handle on that ball, and it went out of bounds. It'll be Peru ball. That was a big possession there. Penn State needed to get a good look that time. Now... Official having a word with Pete Lasicki and Porter Roberts. What's going on there? I don't know. <laughs> Full court pressure now by Penn State. Lasicki on Todd Foster. all the way around the bounce pass into Brantley is taken away he was wide open for a shot and didn't even look at the basket he wasn't even being guarded and tried to force the ball inside like I said sometimes in this juncture in the game Purdue hurts himself Lasicki for three doesn't go Donovan Williams has got the rebound but there was a foul inside before that Looks like they caught Herb Dove holding Gene Katie trying to seal up another Big Ten championship. Back-to-back -back championships for Purdue, and they're going for three in a row. Well, they still have some work to do. They're having a great year. Danny Earl takes it into the lane. Boy, look at the trees waiting in there. Let's see wide open look. for three. Can't get the bounce. Boy, got to knock that one down. Bounce pass inside to Hairston. Well, I'll tell you, I don't know why Roberts Rabble. threw the ball in there. There were two guys on him. Got to use better judgment than that if they want to put the icing on the cake here. Down the stretch. Six minutes and 50 seconds remain. There's Gary Dunn. They're giving Penn State some opportunities to get back in it here, but Penn State isn't converting. They need to get a good look and convert here at this possession. Donovan Williams handles, gets it off to Danny Earl now. Past the screen of Phil Williams, out to Lasicki. Can't get it to go again. There's Big Phil with a rebound, and he was fouled on the way up. Tell you what, Phil Williams is really deceptive. He goes probably about 285, and he can dance around in there. <laughs> Here it is again. There's another good look by Pete. Can't knock it down, and Penn State's going to get back in it. Pete and Danny and Glenn have got to knock down those open shots. Brad Miller was called with a foul. That's his fourth. Well, that'll really hurt to do down the stretch. Yep. He's really a key guy for them. He goes out. Brandon Brantley will come into the game in his spot. So One Brad of the things, Bill, that, that is unusual about Purdue and that, that they're having such a great year and they really don't have a tested go-to guy. And it almost appears at times as though Brad Miller has emerged into a go-to guy for them. Bill Williams hits the free throw. He'll get another one. Three points tonight for the big house two out of two for Phil and Damian McKnight with a full court pressure on Porter Roberts 10 point lead for Purdue 46 to 36 six minutes 15 seconds remain in the game Foster pops open that's a two Bad miss again. Here comes Lasicki. Let's see if Penn State can take advantage. Donovan Williams. That's a two. Yes. It's a big bucket. The last time Penn State trailed by less than 10, the score was 29 to 21. And a foul call to McKnight out top. Purdue has gotten 
very tentative on the perimeter, which is understandable because they're not really good with perimeter jump shots. They're trying to force it inside. And it's costly. Here Penn State gets a nice look ahead in transition, and Donovan Williams knocks it down. Foul on McKnight. Here's Dean Caney, not real happy. Well, he's got to be concerned right now. This is a this is a critical situation if you're a Purdue fan because they have been out of sync offensively and haven't really gotten any good looks. We saw the run, eight zip for Penn State in the last two and a half minutes. Here's Hairston driving to the bucket. Whoa, that was a great individual move. State looks a little confused offensively here, Phil. Len Secunda to Donovan Williams, who will take it straight down the lane. That was a nice aggressive move by Donovan Williams coming off the curl cut. Donovan Williams will go to the line. Len Secunda still trying to find the basket. Well, it's really important that Glenn maintains his composure now. Takes a good look if he has it, but doesn't try to force something if he doesn't have it. Right now, Penn State's still in good shape. If they get a good look from the perimeter, take it. If they get a good look inside, and they can be aggressive now and take it to the basket because Purdue really doesn't want a foul right now. Mm -hmm. They're trying to contain without putting Penn State in the foul line. Donovan Williams hits both. And it's a 10-point or an 8-point lead now, 48 to 40. Baseline, and it gets tied up. Going. That's going to be a jump oh. ball, and it'll be Penn State ball. Wow. Foster had nowhere to go that time. That was really an ill-advised drive. The baseline was covered. Just nowhere to go. That Gaudio goes to the bench. Calvin Booth back into the game, and Dan Earl, after a short breather, back into the game. So Penn State trying to set it up for a stretch run here. They're down eight with four minutes and 40 seconds remaining. And they have the ball. They're in good shape, Phil. In good shape. Got Daniel Rest now. He's back in the ball game. Bill Williams, top of the key. Brantley sags off a hit. A whistle inside. The ball's going to go the other way. What happened? Donovan Williams got called for an illegal back screen. 22nd turnover of the game. Now full court setup. Danny Earl trying to do a little acting there to draw a foul, but Porter Roberts goes right by him. Chad Austin will take it. Oh, Calvin Booth pulled the ball down, but the foul's going to go against Brandon Brantley as he just took his legs out from under. Terrific rebound by the big guy. Third foul on Brantley. Gene Cady starting to sweat a little bit, but he still has a coat on. Let's check out the replay on that last one. Here, Austin gets a good look off the curl cut. Doesn't knock it down, and Calvin comes up with it. Brantley gets tied up with his legs. It's a good call. That's, that's good to see Calvin Booth being aggressive like that, yeah. going, going after the ball. Calvin on the line, long off the back iron, and Jennings with a nice rebound of a long miss. Roberts, good pass to Brantley. Looks like Coach Katie has told his guys to be a little more aggressive offensively, and I, I think uh, the last couple of possessions, they have had more purpose with their offense, and as a result, have had better opportunities. Calvin Booth goes to the bench. Matt Gaudio comes in. Pete Lasicki comes in. And Donovan Williams will also go over to the sideline. Brandon Bradley is on the line. Two points on the game for Bradley. 
His first try from the free throw line tonight. High arcing shot goes down. Gene Cady in his 16th season here at Purdue. Gene does a terrific job. He can really get his guys pumped up to play. They always play hard. Brantley gets both. That brings a smile to Katie's face and Purdue with a 10 point lead. We are starting the Jimmy V Foundation for Cancer Research. We need your help. It may not save my life. It may save my children's life. It may save someone you love. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. To help keep Jimmy V's dream alive, please call 1-800- Jimmy V. Do you believe in movies? Prism does, and that's why you can count on Prism to bring you great movies like Blown Away, Exit to Eden, The Last Seduction, Murder in the First, Richie Rich, Disclosure, Mrs. Parker and the Vicious Circle, The Professional, Just Cause, Boys on the Side, Outbreak, and Little Women, Uncut unedited, commercial-free movies. If you believe in movies, call your cable company and order Prism, because no one believes in movies like Prism. Weekends were made for sports, and New Sport, your source for sports news and information, covers all the weekend action with so many games. Who has the time to catch them all? Now you do with Scoreboard Central, your weekend spot on the dial for all the scores, highlights, and more. Scoreboard Central, no more waiting. Get what you want when you want it. Informative and timely. Scoreboard Central. Parkhill back at Mackey Arena, and there are some keys to this game. Glenn Secunda scoreless. Brad Miller, 15 points off the bench for Purdue. Look at those points in the paint. Purdue with 36 to Penn State 12. And turnover's always a key. Very much so, Bill. And it looks like Purdue did take a, a page out of Indiana's book and, and try to really get aggressive and going inside. All right, join us uh, next Saturday on Creative Sports. Big Ten doubleheader. The action getting underway at noon Eastern. Michigan State Spartans play host to the Badgers of Wisconsin. Then the Iowa Hawkeyes will travel to Champaign, Illinois, to take on the Fighting Illini. Check your local listing for the times in your area. Penn State with the ball, trying to make it single digits again. Glenn Secunda with Justin Jennings on him, trying to find the basket. Good job by Danny Earl to stay aggressive. He had a mismatch, tried to turn the corner and got fouled. Roy Hairston called with a foul. Donovan Williams checks back into the game. Glenn Secunda goes to the sideline. Jared Stevens has not played at all in this game, Bruce. No, usually Jared gets in a little bit, at least in the first half. Dan Earl on the line, hits the first one. Looks like Danny has reestablished his shooting touch in the foul line. 16 points now for Danny Earl. Seven of eight from the field. Penn State still in good shape. Just need to get good looks like they did this time. Each time down the floor now, need to go to the foul line or convert. They've got to hold Purdue. Full court pressure, but Chad Austin works it around. There's Justin Jennings out top of the key. 320 left in the game. Austin had it bounce away. Jennings will take it out top again and set it up. Good defense by Penn State. Six seconds on the shot clock. A force by Austin. Long rebound to Donovan Williams. See, Purdue's in the twilight zone right now. They're trying to kill the clock, but they're not, they're not getting a good shot at the end of the delay game. Two minutes, 49 seconds remain. Foul is called inside as Danny Earl tried to get the bounce pass into Gaudio. Another good possession by the Nittany Lions. It's exactly what they have to do. Go to the foul line, stop the clock. Brad Miller checks back into the game with four personal fouls. They missed him. And they Brandon sure Bradley goes out. 
Matt Gaudio will go to the line. Six points on the night for Gaudio. Damian McKnight checks in. This is usually the, the full court press unit. Yeah, that's a good State. move by Jared. It's platoon, get Damian and Donovan in there. They're quick, athletic. Can cause some problems defensively for Purdue. Matt Gaudio. There's your timeout situation and team foul situation. Purdue in the penalty. Three timeouts left for each. And the possession arrow to the Boilermakers. Gaudio can't get the second one to roll in. Goes out of bounds, and it's Penn State ball. Big break. You got to get Dan Earl back in. Here comes Earl back into the game. Let's see what happened there. Let's see. Uh, Harrison just lost his balance. He's, he should have just stayed strong. Donovan's got to give him room. Tried to throw it off the leg of Donovan Williams, and it bounced right back at him. Steve Lasicki. Lasicki for the three. Oh. What was that, a travel? No, it called an illegal screen on Phil Williams. Oh. Phil Williams going to be called with a foul. Yeah, Lasicki trying to open up for the three-pointer. And Chad Austin will go to the line. Penn State doesn't need to panic now and, and force a three. If they've got a three, fine. If not, take it to the basket, score to to set up defense or go to the foul line. They've got to convert. Austin, a 70% free throw shooter, hits number one to give him 10 points on the night. Herb Dove getting set to check back into the game. And Justin Jennings will go to the sideline. Couple of seniors there. Dove out of Indianapolis. And Justin Jennings, a senior from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Austin hits both. Couple of big buckets. Two and a half minutes remain in the game. Lasicki way outside. Does not go, but Williams with the offensive board. Here goes Donovan Williams driving to the hoop. He passes to Gaudio. The possession arrow is in favor of Purdue, though, after that tie-up. Here you got Donovan Williams driving to the basket. Makes a good dump-off pass to Matt. Matt just doesn't finish. That's a tough break for the Nittany Lions. That was a good opportunity to score and convert. Full court pressure by Penn State now. Chad Austin will bring the ball in. Todd Foster checks back into the game. Austin goes out. There's Miller. Oh. Throwing the elbows around at Phil Williams. Gets the ball to Foster. Porter Roberts. And we've got a blocking foul called before he could get the pass away. Donovan Williams will be called with a foul. Uh, it's a good job by Penn State. They put a lot of heat on Purdue. Couldn't come up with a turnover, but didn't give a layup. Going to make him earn it. Danny Earl and Glenn Secunda will check back into the game. Damian McKnight goes to the sideline. Look for Penn State to run a play off the foul shot, Bill, where they, they set a screen for either Lasicki or Secunda coming off a low screen, then a high screen to get the three-point shot. Now, if the defense really overreacts to either Glenn or Pete, look for the screener to become a primary receiver. Yeah, both of these teams use a lot of players. You can see how many times they've made substitutions here. Jerry Dunn playing the platoon system here at the end. Porter Roberts hits a big foul shot. They make it a 10-point lead again. 53-43 with 2.11 left. Two for Porter Roberts. All right, watch for Pete Lasicki coming off a couple of screens here. Dan Earl. They switch out. Oh, they had Matt Gaudio. Passed it inside for Gaudio, deflected off a couple of hands, and it'll be Penn State ball. Yeah, they, they reacted to Pete Lasicki, and Matt Gaudio was wide open on the slip. Earl again will try to set it up. Less than two minutes remain, and a foul by Porter Roberts. Boy, that, that is a really unnecessary foul right there. <laughs> Gene Cady's got to be going nuts. Yeah, he is. Oh, boy. That's a senior, too. That's, that's surprising. 
stop no the way clock. you want to foul in that situation. One minute 58 seconds remain, and now the full court press unit back on with Donovan Williams coming in for Glenn Secunda. Damian McKnight is ready to come in as well. And there's Danny Earl on the foul line. 17 points for Dan Earl tonight. Brandon Brantley comes in. Herb Dove over to the sideline. There's Brantley. And Roy Hairston will also take a break. Earl can't get it to bounce in. Penn State's getting pretty close to the time where they're going to have to look to foul and convert. And in preparation for that, the Boilermakers now have their five best right. foul shooters in the game. Immediate timeout called by Danny Earl after he made that foul shot. 54-44 is our score with a minute. 58 remaining in this game at Mackey Arena. We'll be back with more after these messages from your local station. Get ready to see Philly fly. Check out the local boys in great Atlantic 10 action on Sports Channel. Check out Temple, LaSalle, St. Joe's, and the rest of the Atlantic 10 as they battle their way to the NCAA tournament. It's all the slams jams and frenzy of college hoops right here on sports channel your home for college basketball fruits and vegetables you know you ought to eat more of them yeah eating five servings a day is a great way to stay healthy <laughs> You'll feel better and you'll have energy, too. Yeah. That's what the people from the National Cancer Institute say. After all, you are what you eat. Hmm. <laughs> Join us next Saturday on Creative Sports for a Big Ten doubleheader. Action getting underway at noon. Michigan State Spartans play host to the Badgers of Wisconsin. And the Iowa Hawkeyes travel to Champaign, Illinois to take on the Fighting Illini all right here on Creative Sports. Check your local, local listings for the times in your area. Jerry Dunn finding out what it's like to be a head coach down the stretch in the Big Ten. Well, right now they got to go for the turnover. If they don't get the turnover, they can't let Purdue run much clock down. Porter Roberts with Damian McKnight on him. McKnight lets him get by and foul. And Porter Roberts will go to the line now. Minute 48 left in the game. Penn State has got to start converting their opportunities. They've gotten a couple of really good looks, and they haven't put them in the basket so that they can set their defense up. In the meantime, Purdue's knocking their foul shots down. Donovan Williams over to the sideline. Glenn Secunda into the game. You can see that Purdue has only been to the line 11 times compared to 17 for Penn State, but they've been hitting. Now the officials have, have let the guys decide this game. They, they have really not gotten involved to the point where they've been too involved, Bill. I think they've, they've let it go and let the players decide it. That's what you like to see. One out of two for Porter Roberts. Okay, watch, watch Glenn Secunda coming off a couple of screens here. See if he can get open. Uh, that was very well defended by Purdue that time. Tried to shovel it down to Secunda and it went out of bounds. And Penn State bring it in the press unit. There's Todd Foster directing traffic for Purdue. They're trying to line up how they're going to break the press. Damian McKnight is going to be called for the foul as he tried to defend the press, trying to keep Porter Roberts away from the ball. That's one of those situations where if, if you look at the, the entire game, there's a lot of contact, there's a lot of bellying up to the cutters. And now in this situation, 
it's called where it hasn't been called most of the game. Two yep. fans are yelling three feet. They've still got their work cut out for them. Yeah. <laughs> Couple of tough road games coming up for Purdue now in Illinois and Indiana. But should they uh, pick up the victory here tonight, they have a two game lead in the Big Ten standing. Porter Roberts now with six points on the night. And Purdue has done it offensively the way they have done it all season long. Nobody scores a whole lot of points. Yep. They get a lot of people contributing. Very balanced. Very balanced. Very unselfish team. Lays them off of their defense. Roberts lines up number two. And Phil Williams with a rebound. Trying to go to Pete. There's Matt on the slip. Went right into Brad Miller. It goes out of bounds. That was a good no call that time. Matt was trying to force the action as he should. Miller held his ground. That wasn't a foul. Good no call. And now the situation substitutions continue. Herb Dove into the game for Todd Foster. Len Secunda back into the game for Penn State. Foster over to the sideline. Masicki will take it. There's a three. A minute 20 left. It's a... Oh, Chad Boston. Oh! Wow. Danny Earl from three. Won't go. Put, oh, Matt Gaudio had the offensive board and a foul underneath. He's well, that time tall. Purdue didn't have a defender on the screener. Danny Earl got a wide open look. Down to the other end we go after the foul on Matt Gaudio. And Brad Miller will go to the line. 15 points for Brad Miller tonight all off the bench and he had foul trouble in the second half. Point lead now for the Boilermakers. Purdue's done a real solid job of hitting their foul shots. At yep. Two for two for Brad Miller. 17 points for Miller tonight. And Danny Earl brings it up to the Nittany Lions. That time Purdue defended the ball screen real well. Switched out. Under a minute left. Lasicki for the three. Off iron and Miller with a rebound. To Porter Roberts. To Austin. Dove. Hello. Gaudio for three. Off iron. Look out. Porter Roberts all alone. The fans love it. Well, they should. They have a terrific ball club. And their guys play hard every night. They earn this win. They, they really play tough defense. 33 seconds remain, and we've got a whistle. Dean Katie and his wife Pat right behind the bench there. I think this is the first game that Pat's seen since their dog had problems. It's really good to see her back. I know they've had some tough times. It's there good is. news that uh, their daughter has recovered. Pete Lasicki from way outside. Miller with a rebound. Looking long again. Chad Austin heading down court. He goes in. Danny Earl right back the other way to Phil Williams. He got it to bounce in. That's what you call a rub in. <laughs> <laughs> Under 10 seconds left in the game and the Boilermakers are gonna do it. Penn State will not challenge the ball in the final seconds and Purdue has picked up a huge victory over Penn State. The final score, 66 to 49, a 17 point victory.
and Bruce Purdue two-point lead in the Big Ten now but still a tough road ahead well they do and, and Penn State as we alluded to earlier has the kind of schedule where they can get on a roll here and pitch out real strong so it's, it's still up for grabs well Penn State loses back-to-back -back games and coming up on Saturday Wisconsin and Michigan State Iowa Illinois right here on creative but it's a night to celebrate for Purdue for Bruce Parkhill this is Bill Zipper good night everyone